Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got a, a video which in a way is a bit of a postscript to a, a video that I produced a couple of months ago where I was trying to get my cheap and cheerful Chinese oscilloscope and signal generator to produce a bowed plot, in other words a plot of uh, time against frequency rather than time against voltage which an oscilloscope would normally do. And although I had some success, and actually I did get a solution which, which worked, I wanted to use it as a, a tool to help me align the intermediate stages of a, of a radio. Um, it wasn't ideal because the triggering uh, didn't really work properly. And unfortunately my Chinese signal generator doesn't actually produce the uh, appropriate uh, synchro output signals to enable me to do that. Um, whereas if you look on EEV blog, Dave, Dave has some excellent videos on this. Again, I'll put links below, as does W2AEW. And they've got uh, far better spec equipment than I have. Um, but I pondered this and had a bit of a thought, and I can't, I've come up with a solution that actually works. And as you can see just at the top of the screen there, I have indeed got a very reliable bowed plot, and this is a, the Chinese oscilloscope, the Chinese signal generator, and that's the uh, frequency response curve of a, a little tank circuit. So uh, let's have a look what I did. Okay, so here's the block diagram of the arrangement that I've got. Uh, so I've got my signal generator here, and it's a two channel signal generator, and channel one uh, has the ability to uh, do, do sweeps and it has the ability to do those sweeps um, either um, by controlled internally by its clock or by using a, a voltage controlled input. Um, so what I've what I tried because I wasn't entirely convinced it would work but it does is I've set up channel 2 with a 1 hertz 2 volt peak to peak um, sawtooth wave like that. Um, I'm feeding the output of channel 2 into the VCO input of channel 1 and I've set channel 1 up to have a sweep between 1 kilohertz and 700 kilohertz in this case so channel 2 is effectively providing the um, the control for channel 1's sweep additionally what I've then done is I've taken uh, a line from channel 2 and connected it to the internal trigger of the oscilloscope so the scope's sweep rate and the sweep rate of the signal generator are actually in synchro um, because I'm using channel 2 to control both. And then what I've done to test it all out is obviously I've got the grounds connected and I've got the channel 1 output straight into channel 1 of the scope and I've just got a simple tank circuit uh, so a capacitor and a, a variable inductor with an iron core here um, which obviously has a a resonant frequency, and it should it should be able to see you should be able to see that. Uh, and I'm very pleased to say that it um, it's worked rather well. So let's just have a look at the arrangement, and um, and then we can look at some of the uh, the output and the effects of uh, adjusting that trimmable inductor. Okay, well you've seen how the uh, signal generator and scope are connected together from a, a synchro point of view. This is the, the little tank circuit, nothing very special to it, a rather ancient polyester capacitor here. And here is the inductor with its, um, its variable ferrite core. And I've simply got them connected as per the previous block diagram. And I just use a little um, non-metallic trimming tool to move the, the core of the inductor up and down, um, like so and uh, be able to see on the scope uh, what that does to the, to the frequency response or actually what you're looking at really is the resonance of this particular this particular tune circuit. Okay so here's the arrangement for the signal generator and the scope and what we've got here is we've got channel 2 as I said earlier producing the 1 hertz ramp at 2 volts peak to peak. I've got a T piece here uh, one half of the T-piece goes along that cable there and back into the rear of the signal generator into the VCO input. Uh, the other half of that feeds the external trigger on the scope. Um, channel 1 output, which is set up as a sweep, in this case between 1 kilohertz and 700 kilohertz, uh, goes effectively straight to channel 1. Um, but earlier you've just seen the, the tank circuit and essentially I've just got the tank circuit um, in between the uh, 
the inner and the outer of those uh, the cables connecting uh, channel one and two. So that, that's the plot at the moment and what you've got here is you've got the, the scopes sweep is effectively uh, one hertz so every time the sweep starts at uh, one kilohertz uh, the, the sweep of the scope starts and it should finish at about 700. Now I've messed about a little bit with uh, the time base uh, with the speed so that I can um, show the waves bunched together so it gives you a much better idea of uh, what the shape actually looks like uh, and I've simply moved uh, the display down so you can see that just simply the top half if you were to move it up what you'd actually be seeing here was uh, the envelope which was obviously identical both above and below uh, the zero line However, more normally when you look at a boat plot, it's usually again with zero against the bottom. So I've just uh, simply moved that down so you can see the shape. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the trimmer tool into that adjustable inductor. And uh, if you just make a mental note, the peak there is just, just below that one line above the centre line. So I'm going to start moving the inductor down. Just gently, bearing in mind it takes a moment or two for the display to update. And straight away you can see there I've got a already got a, an improvement, the resonance is changing slightly. Uh, so we've gone already gone up about one division. Um, it's quite a subtle movement really, so I'm being very careful. Yeah, we're still climbing a little bit. And sudden dip there is me pulling the, the tool out of the uh, the inductor it is it is very very sensitive so if I then wind the inductor out quite a lot just to give you a, an idea you can see now straight away there's the uh, resonance has dropped right off um, as the inductance of the, the coil has changed so we're definitely seeing the frequency response curve of that tank circuit and uh, the way I intend to use this, there we are, I've got it back up, I've got it a little bit higher than before. The way I intend to use this is to um, feed in uh, a swept frequency probably between about 400 and uh, 500 kilohertz into the IF stage of the, the radio I'm working on and then I can, from the output, I can actually then view uh, the, hopefully the response of the IF stages and it should allow me to uh, not only pick up the response but also uh, tighten up the skirt so to speak which Im would improve the selectivity of the radio. Um, if I need to um, the other thing I'll also be able to do is use a, th a second signal generator to inject a marker um, so if let's say the intermediate frequency is 455 kilohertz uh, I can put a marker in at 455 and I should be able to see a, a line wherever 455 is on here so there we are, that's the, the general principle. I'm pleased I've got it working right at last. It took a little bit of uh, thinking about, but I think this is quite a nice example how relatively cheap um, Chinese equipment with a bit of thought can actually be made to do something that the more expensive stuff would do, uh, would just take in its stride. But in this case, we've uh, got the result we want uh, just in a hobbyist lab and um, that's going to help me with some of my radio restoration projects. So, all good. Okay, well that's it for uh, for this video. I hope it's, uh, it's been useful to you. I'm very pleased to have managed to produce uh, a spectrum plot from the scope. It's going to be a useful tool for me to use with uh, some of the radio restoration projects that I'm doing. You, some of you may have watched those videos. If not, I'd encourage you to watch them. Uh, you can see them in uh, in the various playlist section of, uh, of my uh, channel um, and none of this would have been really possible without W2AW's uh, very good videos and also uh, Dave from EEV blog uh, because they have essentially provided the inspiration for me to try and if you like push the boundaries a little bit and discover if I really could do this with my with my cheap and cheerful equipment and I'm pleased to say I have um, so I'll put some links to their channels down below too. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, 
please click the thumbs up. If not, you can click the thumbs down. Either way, it'd be great if you could subscribe. That'd help me. And look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks for watching.